What's up, everybody? Troy Cartwright here. Welcome back to another episode of Ten Year Town. Before we get going, we are very, very close to our subscriber goal on YouTube. So if you can go to our YouTube page and hit subscribe, it would help us out a ton. You can do that at tenyeartown.com. Hope you guys are having a great week. Thanks. Today's guest is Tierra Kennedy. You know Tierra from her feature on the latest Beyonce record and from her own music as well. In this episode, we discuss her journey through Nashville, the highs and the lows, how she found some of her favorite collaborators, and the advice that she would give to her younger self. I really enjoyed this one. I know you guys will too. So without further ado, here she is. So I'm making an executive decision. We're just going to roll no headphones today because you got a cool hat on. <laughs> so you... I know, I always make it difficult. You and Cole Ford are the only people that have not worn the headphones. I like it. Yeah. I, I've really been into the hat thing lately. It just like... It's pretty sick. It just makes it easier in the mornings, you know, not actually having to do my hair. <laughs> I, I feel like I want to do... Like I've gone through phases where I'm like being the hat guy. Yeah. You would like kill a hat. I, I feel like I don't know what kind of hat to wear. Like I feel like you could do like a short brim, like a little like a fedora maybe. Like a fedora. But yeah. then I'm like a fedora guy. But that's cool. I don't think so I want to cool. be a fedora guy. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I feel okay, like that's it's a, it's like a commitment. Uh, I feel it. Like I already, I already feel like I'm getting, I'm getting old. So. I, oh my gosh! No, <laughs> you would, you would pull it off. I feel like hats just like it, they make any outfit cooler. No, I, I have good. confidence. Are we, uh, are we rolling? Awesome. Um, and I feel like. When was the last time I saw you? The it was some award show at the Ryman. Award show, ATM honors, maybe. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was that or. Or AI, whatever the, there's a lot of oh, award shows. Oh, yeah, there, yeah. I think it was um, ACM Honors, though. I yeah, think you're like, right. What is the writer's award? Is it award? AIMP? Awards? Yeah, maybe it was that one. I can't yeah. remember. I've been to like three there, I feel like, in the last year. I know, yeah. So, yeah. Also, I didn't realize, I just played there the other day for a Patsy Klein tribute show, which was really fun, but I, I like, have never really been like backstage. I never, backstage. I never have. It's like cramped back there. It's tiny. <laughs> yeah. How many, like, how many dressing rooms are there? I mean, there's a good bit of dressing rooms, but okay, to be fair, the first lady was there. So, you know, they kind of like, took there was over. some stuff yeah, going on. There was a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Cause I just went, and did a, a thing at the Opry for the first time, which I'd never been there before. And their what? backstage is crazy huge. Yeah. Wait, did you make your debut? Or no, like, like okay. I didn't. I just, it was like, a, I just went to like meet everybody. They give okay. you like a tour. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They do the whole thing. Yeah. Um, Which is, was kind of insane being there. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. Yeah. I was so, heavy is not the right word. But it feels yeah. mm -hmm. you feel very exactly honored to be there. Yes, you, it it's like you feel the history of everyone that's been there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I'm toxic, so I'm like, how, how have I never been like when I, I was at this label doing all this stuff? Like, yeah. how did I never? How did I never do this? Like, what were they doing? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I say that all the time. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, that's awesome though. The, yeah, the Opry School. I always say it's like, um, it's like an artist's Disney World. You yes. know, it's just like everybody has their doors open. Everybody's so welcoming, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's so a, cool. It's good vibes, and it feels very, like you said, historic. Yes, but it also they have a great way of making you feel very welcome it's mm -hmm. not stuffy at all no you know yeah. what i mean yeah it's it's hard to explain right it is. like it's <laughs> yeah. it's, pre, it's magical yeah. that's the word that i would use exactly yeah. so it's pretty cool um well i always start this thing off with the same question okay which is how long have you been in town i've been in town for eight years where from I am from Birmingham, Alabama. Nice. Um, and when I moved here, my whole family moved up here with me. So Did they really? Yeah. So my parents 
and uh, my two younger sisters. I have an older sister. She's still um, back in Birmingham. But yeah, I brought them all here and they love it. Yeah. That's so cool. They're thriving. <laughs> did you did you move here like for were you going to school? Did, was it strictly for music or what was kind of definitely the... for music? Yeah. I wanted to go to Belmont, okay. um, but it's super expensive. Yeah. So I didn't. Um I got basically a full ride scholarship to University of North Alabama. Okay. Um, so I went there for a year and it's pretty close to Nashville, so I could like come up here on the weekends yeah. to like meet people and, you know, write sometimes. Um, but after a year, I convinced my parents. To, well, actually, the town convinced my parents to move here because they were kind <laughs> of like my momager and dadager. So they would be in meetings. Yeah. And everyone was like, if she wants to be in country music, she has to be here. And right. so they heard that enough to where they were like, okay, they we'll believed move. you. Yeah. Yeah. How did, um, how were you kind of on? Sounds like you were on some people's radar already at yeah. that point. So how did, how did, um, I don't know. How did that kind of all start? Yeah. So when I was in the Shoal, in Muscle Shoals, um, I was writing a lot with Mike McGuire um, of Shenandoah. Okay. And he introduced me to Laurel Kittleson, um, oh, yeah. who Love she was Laurel. at Big Machine at the time. And um, she was like kind of one of the first people I met in town. And she was just so great and like introduced me to anybody in the industry, like any writer yeah. um, or if there was another publisher that, you know, um, she thought I would vibe with. Um, and yeah, she kind of put my foot in the door. That's so <laughs> sick. Yeah. Um, so you move up here, I guess. Yeah. Bring the whole fam. Yeah. I brought the whole family. The day I moved here, um, I had a show at the listening room. Which was really, it was really cool for me to like move here and immediately hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, cause like I dreamed of being here for so long and I was yeah. like, I am going to work my hardest. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I played a show of the listening room and then, um, kind of like my thing when I first moved here was just like, I did like a lot of restaurant gigs. Yeah. I would play at the row in Midtown. No doubt. Um, and play like in hotel lobbies. And I just did yeah. that. Yeah. For yeah. like the first couple of years. That's awesome. Just, yeah, whatever pays the bills, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, were you at this point, had you met or were you working with any publishers or anything like that? Or what was it? Kind of a yeah, we yeah. like it. We'll see. Yes, it was exactly that, and and I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect moving here. Um, well, maybe I did. I did have expectations, and they were the wrong expectations. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that I was gonna like play the bluebird and get discovered. <laughs> totally, <laughs> because that's all the do. story I heard. Yeah. Yes, and then I realized that it's very much so not that. Um, and, you know, my goal was to sign a publishing deal when I moved here. Um, and I felt like it was taking longer than it should. Totally wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I signed a publishing deal about two years into moving here. Um, but I am grateful that it happened when it did and not when I wanted it to because I so was not ready. Like my songs were not, <laughs> they were not yeah. good. <laughs> they were not good. It's hard when you're young too or when you're getting started. Yeah. You believe your songs yes. are there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you just don't have the the depth of knowledge exactly. yet. And it's hard because you're, you're like, you know, I feel like a, Felt like I was like a dog, like straining on a leash or something. Yeah. Just trying to like, yeah. It's like, let me go. Yeah. And, <laughs> and like, I, when I moved to Nashville, that was my first time, well, one of my first times co writing. Yeah. I like hadn't had a lot of experience doing that because there's not really that kind of culture in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, and so the only songs I'd written were by myself. And, yeah, I thought they were good, but they weren't. And because I went and I got into the room with other writers that were more experienced and have, have been here for a long, a long time. And yeah. I learned so much from them. And yeah, definitely those first couple of years, my writing got so much better. Yeah. 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 You learn, you learn 
you learn fast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so your first publishing deal, mm -hmm. who was it? Who was it with? And like, yeah. how did it, how did it change your life? Oh my gosh. So, um, I signed with, uh, songs, it's songs and daughters, big loud yeah. and Warner. Um, and Sam Jervy was at big loud. Oh, she's, God. she's not there anymore. I love Sam. I love her so much. Um, we still, we still hang. Yeah. Um, and I, I still give her, I still give her hell sometimes to leave me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, so I met her and we, you know, we just were doing the thing. I was like sending her songs yeah. and, you know, she would send me feedback. Um, and I didn't know that Songs and Daughters was even a thought when we were talking. Yeah. Um, I obviously was a huge fan of Nicole and yeah. her writing. Um, and she came to one of my listening room shows. And in my mind, I was like, okay, this is super cool. Maybe I'll get the chance to write with her. Yeah. Um, never in a million years would I think that I would sign a publishing deal with her. Um, I think we like went back and forth for, it was probably a, another year. It felt like another year. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, back and forth sending her songs. And then um, one day she called me and I was at the gym and asked me if I wanted to sign a publishing deal. Dang. And I was like, Heck yeah. This yeah. is the best day ever. <laughs> That's so sick. Yeah. It's the best call to it's get. It's the best because it like, for me, it was like the first validation of like, okay, you're doing something right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you didn't move here for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've talked to a lot of publishers on, on this podcast and just in general. And I know for, they say a lot of publishers say like getting to offer a writer their first deal yeah. is like the coolest thing. Yeah. Even even when I was going through my second round, mm -hmm. you know, like had my first deal for five years and then was doing the the publisher dance again. Yeah. It was still like I had a few offers and I every yeah. time I would get one, I would be like, are you for real? I know. It feels, it's like it's you the want coolest me? feeling. You like me? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all want to feel wanted, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. And also I think like songwriting is such a like you're kind of you're doing it in a silo you know mm -hmm. and and sometimes like you don't really know if it's good and I think we all have imposter syndrome you know and yeah. so like getting offers from people that have been in the business know what they're doing like that's definitely like a good stamp of validation oh yeah. absolutely yeah yeah um so once you signed that deal did it sort of change the the levels of rooms that you were getting into with writers or was it, was it more of the same or how did that kind of impact your, yeah. your writing career? Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely felt like, I felt like I was getting into rooms. I felt like I was honing in on what my sound was and who I wanted to write with. Yeah. Um, and yeah, definitely getting into cooler, <laughs> into cooler rooms, yeah. which is also super intimidating too. Like oh, yeah. even like, ha you know, having a publishing deal, I like there still is that imposter syndrome of like, am I actually good enough? And so, you know, I, I remember just like walking into these rooms and like, oh my gosh, I hope that they're not like, oh, this girl's a joke. <laughs> 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 um, you know, but yeah, it, I think that was the the most fun process for me was like getting to be in the room with new writers and figuring out, you know, not necessarily who I like and who I don't like, but like, I guess, like who understands my sound the most, yeah. you know, and like really narrowing down that, that pool of writers. Yeah, finding your your crew, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. 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 It's you, you start to realize, oh, I'm getting not just. I, I like to think that every song that I write is pretty good. Yeah. But it's finding the people where I'm consistently getting, um, if I'm writing for me as the artist, yeah. the type of songs that I want to do as an artist. Yes. And then on the other side of that is, of course, like, oh, okay, these songs I'm writing with these people are getting cut by other artists. Mm -hmm. And that's cool too. Mm -hmm. So trying to make sure I'm always yeah. – Servicing, trying to be but, yeah. strategic, I guess. Yeah, which for me, like, I've never been 
I've never been a kind of writer that wants to write for other artists. I yeah. definitely love writing for my for oh, myself. It, it tortures me. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's it's tough like getting into, you know, the brain of another artist and yeah. also being an artist myself. Um so yeah, I think that's definitely been like an interesting thing to navigate because my sound is so specific. Yeah. Um, you know, R and B country and yeah. Um, it's kind of one of those things where like you either get it or you don't like you right. either grew up listening to that kind of music and you just have that in you. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was definitely, um, and I, you know, I think still like writing with new people, that's like, you know, something that I'm like trying to yeah. navigate, but also I think you I think you figure out pretty quickly when you start writing the song whether or not it's going to be for <laughs> whether whether it's going to be for me or for another person. Totally. Um and so I think also I you know try to be in the mindset of okay I'm I'm serving I'm servicing the song. If it's not for me like we're still going to write a good song today, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, d there is this moment in a write where it dawns on me. Mm -hmm. Oh. This one's not for me. This is not, yeah, this, this so isn't going that lane, but I that's okay. To, I have to immediately <laughs> adjust. Well, I don't know. It's a slightly different mindset. Uh-huh, it is. But I will say 90 plus percent of every cut I've ever gotten not on, that's not on me as yeah. an artist has not been because I was, I was thinking we were going to write for uh, so-and-so yeah. artists. It was always just... It just happened. I think it's for me. Yeah. Or... I just think this is a great song. Yeah. You know, it's, and somehow it finds a way. Yeah. To, That's so cool too. Yeah. Like when you just randomly, it's like, oh, this person wants to cut this song. It's like, what? I know. <laughs> like, wow. Okay. I was yeah. like, I, I, yeah, I've like, I've, you know, had that happen a, a few times. And, you know, like I said, I'm not specifically writing for other people. So it's always cool when, when that does happen. Oh yeah. It's yeah. the best. Yeah. Um, all right. So got this, you signed this publishing deal. You're doing your thing. Yep. Um, so what what happens next? What's the next uh, you know waypoint on the journey? Yeah. So I started. Um, well, I met my producer Cameron okay. Bedell. Love Cam. Cool. We love him. He's also a pain in my side at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like my older brother. Um, and we wrote this song together. The first song we ever wrote together it was called "Founded in You." And uh, it was a two-way, <laughs> which like, you know, those can be terrifying sometimes because yeah. you don't know like if you're going to vibe or not. And um, we wrote this song and he sent me the demo. And I was like, whoa, like this, this is exactly what I've been trying to say yeah. as an artist um, and the exact sound that I was looking for. And so I had to do a little bit of convincing <laughs> to, oh, for really? him to be my producer because, you know, he's he that wasn't his thing. Yeah. He hadn't dabbled into the producer world yet. Um, and so, yeah, I finally convinced him and um, we just we started making music together, um, put that song out and then I put an EP together, um, put that out. And we did all of that independently. And yeah. I didn't really have like any you know, expectations around it. I just, I knew that I had, I had found a thing and, yeah. um, I wanted people to hear it. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of the next step after I signed my publishing deal. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember when all that stuff was, was coming out. Um, it's really, it's really cool. It's different. Yeah. You know, it yeah. felt like you. Yeah. Felt like something fresh and. Yeah. Um, we need that, you know? Yeah, it it was, yeah, it's, it's really fun thinking back to making that music because there definitely, there was no, um, we just had to create, like there wasn't a lot of opinions around yeah. what it should be, which Not was. a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Yes, <laughs> it was the best, it was the best feeling. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that's founded in you just like took off. Yeah. Um, it and it was like over COVID too. Um, over the pandemic, it got like it landed on Hot Country and got like over twenty million streams, and Dang. just it really like catapulted me, um, you know, to a place that I didn't 
I didn't think that I was ready yet, but we yeah. we dove in. Yeah, like record labels started reaching out and I was like, okay, I guess we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and what was that process like when they started reaching out? Well, it was funny, like the first few started to reach out and I was like, okay, this is fun. I mm-hmm. get to like kind of experience what this is like, but I definitely am not looking to sign a record deal right now. Um, and then more started to reach out yeah. and we started to take meetings and it got serious. And I was like, okay, um, this is happening. This is happening. Yeah. You know, I had reservations around it because I'd been independent for so long and I loved it. Like I was thriving. Um, Me and my husband, my husband's my creative director. And, you know, we've always just created content together and kind of, you know, built this together. And I didn't want to lose that, Um, you know, because I'd heard stories of how record deals go. It was terrifying. Yeah. You know, but also on the other hand, I was like, well, maybe this is maybe this is my moment and maybe I should take advantage of it while it's here. Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, we we started taking the meetings and um, took a meeting with Big Machine and Valerie and uh, I it was it was funny because I like. I just I didn't know what to expect going into that meeting. Yeah. I you know, I played them a couple songs and they kept asking for more songs. And I was like, at this point, I don't know. I don't even remember that many original songs. I'm gonna have to start playing you some covers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um then they they offered me a, a deal on the spot. Wow. And again, I was like, okay, I guess I guess we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It uh, was wild. And did you did it go back and forth for a while or was it was it pretty did it all happen pretty quick cuz sometimes yeah. a, a record deal can take 9 months to yeah get through the whole short form to long form yes to, yeah know. honestly it was it was pretty quick yeah um i was expecting it to drag out because uh, you know i know that's how contracts go yeah. um but yeah it was it was pretty quick um saw my deal and um and a few months later we went to radio Dang. and then we started that whole ride. <laughs> uh, yeah. Boy, it's a ride. It is a ride. Yeah. Um, Were you doing the one. radio tour and stuff or was this still pandemic? Yeah. So it was, it was like coming, we were coming out of the pandemic and gotcha. um, people started to open up. And so I actually got to, which I was excited. Like I, I know that radio tour is a lot. Um, but I was excited to put in that work and to be able yeah. to say that I did it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think we were on the road for two months, maybe, um, on radio tour. And it was also like radio tour during the week and then festivals on the weekend. Yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't home that much. Um, it was, a, it was a lot, but I, I really, even still, like I look back, like I, I enjoyed it because it was something that I looked forward to being able to experience for a long time. Um, For those that don't know, can you kind of describe what being on radio tour is like? Yes. So it's just basically going around the U.S. and visiting all the country stations and um, playing the single and a couple couple other songs, um, you know, to introduce yourself to the programmers in the hopes that they'll play your song on yeah. radio. <laughs> yeah. Or is it a lot of um, early morning flights and late nights and dinners? That's, that's yeah. kind of the perception. Right? Yes. The early mornings, actually, there weren't too many of them. It was, that wasn't too bad. Um, there was a lot of dinners. Um, but again, like, I kind of wanted to have the mindset of like, okay, I know all of these things going into it. I know that I'm probably going to have to get up super early, Um, you know, probably going to be eating really bad food Um, and maybe sometimes singing for people that aren't really listening to me, but that it it is what it is, you know, and I'm going to make the most out of it. Um, So that's what I tried to do. Part of the ride. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That's, that's such a great attitude to have. Um, yeah, I, I had a 
my radio tour experience was all during COVID. Was it? So did you do it on Zoom? Yeah, but it was just so... Oh, that's the worst. It was so... Everything you're describing yeah. was all the same things that I was prepared for. Yeah. You know, and uh -huh. I've been meeting these program directors over the two years that I was kind of waiting my turn, right? Yeah. So I had, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would like keep a file, keep a note with like, yep. oh, this program director, you know, because you, and it, it, it's not a, it's not like a transactional thing. It's just, you're meeting a lot of people yeah. and some of the people I really connected with. And yeah. it's like, oh, this guy, we talked about his son yes, and his son is into the, this or that or whatever. And just trying to remember. Yes. It's a um, lot to remember. You have to write it down. Yeah. But I, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and I was excited for it. And you know, it, it's nobody's fault. It's just sort of you know, yeah, COVID happened. Yeah, I mean, I, you probably because like the, I feel like too like the latency and like nobody like who's gonna who's gonna talk who's not gonna talk. You oh, know, yeah, like it's super weird. Yeah, super weird. It's just not. It's not quite the same. And and yeah. and there's not, you know, you're there for 20 minutes. Yeah, on a Zoom call, and then you know, there's not going to be any spontaneous. Uh -huh. I really thrive in the. Okay, we've talked business now. Let's hang out. Yeah, same. You know, same, I like to connect yeah. with people yeah. on a deeper level. So, yeah, it was hard, but yeah, you know, the music industry is hard, and <laughs> it it'll is. it'll break your heart. So, yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, part of it. Yeah. So, um, all right. So you do this radio tour, do the single, and then you're kind of, I guess, still making music and stuff. And yeah, yeah. I mean, what I don't know. I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but no, it's okay. Yeah, you know, it was. I definitely wanted to be putting out music mm -hmm. consistently, yeah, um, because that's what I was doing before I signed my deal. Um, but you know, everything with labels is just slower. Yeah, it's a lot slower. Yes. Um. And so we put found a new went to radio, and um, I think they pulled it like a few months later. Yeah. And then you know, kind of went back to the drawing board, um, and we recorded a couple songs um, to put out. So we did that, and then um, towards the end of my deal, I went back on radio tour again. So I did radio tour oh, twice dang. with another song. Yeah. Um, yeah. The second time I definitely was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can enjoy this as much as the yeah. first time. Um, but yeah, we, we, we did that again and it was kind of the same situation, like pulled it again, yeah. you know, a few months later. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. <sighs> it's tough. Yeah. It's super tough. Um, you know, I kind of, it kind of felt like all of my worst nightmares of having a record deal was coming true. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it wasn't panning out the way. Yeah. The way I wanted it to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you have this video that I saw that mm -hmm. you posted kind of after things didn't work out yeah. the way that you wanted them to. And... Um, it's so, it's such a compelling piece of content, you know? I mean, that's, that's a, a very, I don't know. I don't like the word content. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. No. Content it, is king. It's, it's, re it's so real. Yeah. It's so, mm -hmm. I watched it again today, just kind of getting ready for this interview because I saw it when you posted it. Um, and it still hit me. It still hits me when I go back yeah. to watch it. Be we yeah. No, go ahead. I I I towards the end of my deal, I started to get more vulnerable about how I was really feeling mm -hmm. about the industry and my place in it. Um because I kind of did this thing where you know, you pretend that everything's okay Don't when you're you. out in public, yep. um, you know, 
And that got to be really tough. I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, and so I started posting these videos. Um, we call them therapies, <laughs> And um, just kind of share my feelings, you know, about what I'm going through. Yeah. And it felt so good to just tell the truth and to be honest about the fact that I wasn't happy. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, then when I got dropped from my record deal, I felt it really important to not just skim over the fact that I got dropped. Like I, like that's hard, you oh. know, it's, yeah. it's really hard. And I didn't want to have to go out in public and explain over and over again that I, mm -hmm. you know, what happened. And yeah. so, um, my husband and I just, we just sat down and he, put up the camera and we just talked yeah. about, you know, how I was feeling. And it was, it was a really, it really is just like a peek into our conversation because like he is my creative director. So he is in the thick of it with me. He's also my husband. So yeah. like everything that happens, like I'm going home to him, like either excited about something or crying about something. Yeah. Um, and, so we just sat down and just had a real conversation about it. And um, I was scared out of my mind to post that video. That's how you know it's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was also such a huge sigh of relief yeah. to just put my feelings out there. Yeah, How'd you, how did you feel afterwards? I, I, was, I was terrified. I was yeah. terrified because I didn't, you know, the point of that video was not to was not to make anyone angry or, you know, to point fingers. Yeah. I just, I just wanted people to know what I was feeling. Yeah. Um, and so I definitely had, I definitely was a little scared that, um, you know, I, I didn't want anybody to take offense to, to that video because, sure. you know, I still love so many of the people, um, at my label, yeah. um, at my former label, um, and so, yeah, I was, I was scared about that. Um, but you know, a lot of them were so great and they reached out and we talked and it was great. And so I was like, okay, everything's good. It's all good. Yeah. Everything's all good. Um, you know, I've, I got my feelings out there. I said my piece. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah. it's good. And then you don't have to deal with the, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a weird time yes. after <laughs> you have a change. Yeah. Uh, because people are like, oh, how's, yes, how's that thing going? And you're like, yeah, ah. yeah. And sometimes you just don't want to explain it. So you just say, oh, it's, it's okay. Yes. You and know? that's what, that's what I did, honestly. <laughs> and like towards, you know, the past couple of months of my deal, like, um, I was doing a lot of that, yeah. you know, and, and it also was funny because people would also say like, you're killing it right now. You're doing so much. I see you everywhere. And yeah. I'm like really because i feel like i'm nowhere like i'm doing <laughs> nothing um yeah. and so yeah it's all it perception is always interesting yeah. yeah so um after all that happens do you know at this point like that you're about to be uh, like featured on like <laughs> freaking beyonce record no. <laughs> <laughs> no let me just walk you through it like yeah I get dropped from my record deal and I'm just in the state of what am I going to do yeah. now? Because Existential. <laughs> yes, because it's not like I chose to leave and I knew that I was leaving. Like it was a shock, yeah. you know? And so I'm like, okay, what do I do now? And I even question, I even ask God, like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to be here? Yeah. Because it, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. And I just kept hearing him say, I'm not done with you yet. Mm. And I didn't know what that meant, but I trusted that he didn't bring me this far to let me down. Yeah. And so, you know, we started planning to put out music. Um, you know, I was like, God doesn't want me to give up. So I guess I'm just going to keep making music. Yeah. Um, so we started planning that and then, um, 
Beyonce announced that she was putting out the Cowboy Carter album. Well, no, she dropped the two singles, actually. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. My favorite artist ever yeah. is here, and I'm so excited about this. And so I put out a cover, um, and that alone, like, the cover that I posted was, like, my first time having a viral moment. Oh, really? Yeah. Which, you know, that's also another thing that I feel like, you know, in the industry, like everyone's pressuring you to go viral. Mm -hmm. And you're like, moment. what? okay, no one knows how to go viral. So like, <laughs> what, what do you want me to do? Yeah. So that was like, it was, that was a really cool moment for me. And, you know, it felt like, it just felt like, you know, a hug from Jesus of like, yeah. I told you, I, I, I got you, you yeah. know, just that little like viral moment for there's me a, was such a sign. There's a quote that I love. I don't know. I don't remember who said it, but it, it, it says, uh, opportunity is a strange beast yeah. and it frequently appears after a loss. Yeah. And that has been true in my life. Yeah. So many times something that I think is the worst thing that's ever happened mm -hmm. to me happens. And then soon after the best the thing best that's ever thing. happened to me and, happens. And it's th that, like, I feel like it's hard to go through those those hard seasons, but it makes it so much more special when yeah. it does happen because you know that you went through it to get there, yep. you know? Yep. And that's, exact, that's exactly how I felt. Um, and then I just, I just randomly got asked to, to be on on this album. I have no idea how they found me. I don't know wow. if they saw the cover. I have no idea, but yeah. I was, it, I still can't believe that yeah. it happened to this day Yeah, because I, I was so used to, you know, sitting at home and scrolling through Instagram and seeing other people get opportunities that I wanted so badly for myself. Yeah. And I was so used to that feeling and having to like therapize myself, <laughs> you <laughs> oh, know, yeah. through that. And so now to like actually be the one getting to experience the cool thing, it's such a strange feeling for yeah. me. Like I'm so not used to it. Um, but I'm, I'm just, I'm soaking in every yeah. moment. Um, it's, it's crazy to me that this happened, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, right after getting, like the worst thing that could happen as an artist. And now, like you said, the best thing yeah. that could ever happen. Yeah. Are you, are you taking it in? Are you feeling good? I am. Good. I am. And I, you know, I used to be so bad at celebrating <laughs> moments because I'm always on to the next thing. Like, mm -hmm. okay, this happened. Now I got to do the work to get to the next thing, you know? Yeah. But man, like the past two and a half years, they were so hard. They were so hard. And I was the most oppressed I've ever been. Yeah. And so now to be on the complete opposite side of that, I am soaking in every single moment and every day. Yeah. 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 Just sitting in it. I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> such a, such a amazing record. And yeah, like, yeah, it's very, it's very cool to be a part of. It's, I can't even it's imagine. It's so cool. I mean, it's <laughs> it's wild to think about. Like, I also feel like something like this has not been done on such a massive scale. Like, she is, to me, the biggest artist in the world. And I'm such a newbie. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, you know, yes, I've been in town for, for eight years. But, yeah. like, she has so many years on this industry, yeah. you know. And so for her to see an artist like me... It's it's just wild. Yeah, it's wild. It's uh, almost impossible to describe. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's that's so that's so great. Yeah, what an amazing story. Um, well, what's uh, what's next? What's next? Yeah. Um, well, I have a song called "I'm a Cowgirl," um, that we put out. It's my fir it's the first independent release, yeah. um, and we are putting out a song um, every five weeks until the album. So That's we are so like awesome. we're cranking it out. Yeah. You know, I kind of was like, for so long, I I felt like I wasn't putting out 
music. Um, and so now to have complete troll of control of, you know, what I put out and what it looks like, we are just like, yeah. we're loving it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, a good feeling. <laughs> it's such a great feeling. <laughs> um, and you know, especially like creating with my husband, um, he, he's just, he's so great. And yeah. like, I, I tell him all the time, like, I'm honored to be able to work with you because he just comes up with this vision, you know, for content, for videos. And I just show up and I'm like, okay, oh, I'll do my thing. Amazing. And it, you know, it's such a partnership yeah. and, um, it's beautiful. Yeah. We have a lot of fun and I feel like, I feel like I've grown so much as a human and as an artist and, really honed in on what my sound is, what my brand is. Yeah. Um, and so to put out my first album and to be, I, I'm so proud of the music and the way everything looks. Um, and, and yeah, like it's, it's a grind. Like the independent life is a grind, but I love it. I yeah. love it so much. Um, yeah. I love having my hand in, in everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, getting to steer the ship. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I Thanks appreciate for it. Me. Thanks for your telling telling your story. It's an amazing story. Thank you. Um, and uh, that's it. <laughs> that's the pod. Cool. See you later. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ten Year Town. If you're still listening, you must have liked it. So we hope that you will leave us a rating or review on Apple or Spotify or give us a subscription on uh, YouTube. It's all free. Don't cost you nothing. But uh, we appreciate you being here and uh, thank you for supporting the Tenure Town community. See you next week.